Good Monday, makers. It's time for another episode of our Build Roundup. As always, we've got some really great builds, and I'm joined with Dave. Good Monday, everybody. We've got some great builds. We're going to be checking out a, a garden trellis. We've got a pergola. We've got dust collection arm. There's some really cool things. Let's jump right in and check them out. First up, we've got this is a video shared by Nature's Always Right, and this is Stephen, and he's been working on several different projects, and most recently he shared his trellises that he's working on for his garden, and he did a whole video about it, included kind of an overview of everything, he talked about Maker Pipe, which we appreciate, and then he uh, kind of dove into his trellis design, and then also broke down exactly how to make it, but then he even dives into the whole like pruning process and how to train tomatoes to actually use a trellis, which is really cool, and I think uh, a cool thing that he incorporated into uh, the, this kind of a video. It, uh, it's so awesome to see like a build in full season, right? Mm -hmm. Like usually we see builds and they're like at the beginning of the <laughs> season, the trellises are, and there's just right. dirt. <laughs> and <laughs> he's got an amazing garden and it's, uh, you know, in full swing. So it's really awesome to see. Yeah. yeah. You can see he's had it up for a while. I think he was trying some different things, but as Dave was saying, he's <laughs> got quite the growth and Looks like it's it's working great. Uh, but the design, I think, is really simple. You can see here he's got the 90-degree connectors in the corners. And that's a really great way to start any kind of trellis build because you can basically, you know, a lot of garden beds are made of wood or even if they're, you know, steel or even if they're not a garden bed or not a raised bed at all or just, you know, a garden bed that's on the ground. Uh, I mean, I guess they're all on the ground. But, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, you can use the 90-degree connectors to kind of create a rectangle and kind of match the shape of a garden bed. And then right to whatever size you want. Right. I mean, it's just cutting the pipe different. Mm -hmm. And you customize the height with the vertical pipes, and you customize the width, and then the length. Um, you know, with those pipes there, and that's kind of what he goes into and, and kind of explains how it works. And says, finally, a tomato trellis that lasts forever. Yeah, I think he's used PVC in the past. Uh -huh. um, and as you can see, that's a lot of weight, and he's got a ton of plants. So the more that they they grow. It's just going to keep adding more and more weight. Um, but Cool. Yeah, so a great build. And if you're interested in following suit and building a trellis like that and kind of learning about pruning and training tomatoes, it's a great video. Definitely check it out. It'll be linked in the description, just like all the builds will. So thanks very much, Stephen, for posting that. Really great to see. Yeah, remember it next season. Yeah, for sure. Next up is a build from Jamie, and this is a 10 by 20 pergola build that wow. he made. It looks like a really beautiful space. I always love to see. When I had a house, I was not very good with the landscaping, so I always appreciate <laughs> seeing people that you know take care of their property and have like a, a nice sanctuary, I guess you can call it. They kind of hang out. You got a fountain in there. It and, takes a lot of time. I mean, there's different. You take for granted like how much time it actually <laughs> takes, you know, to to make a garden like that for sure. And there's even different types of stones. It's like color coordinated, so you know, it's really cool. Um, but this pergola that he made basically you know it's 10 foot wide and 20 foot long so we can see you know in the corners just like with the trellis we looked at there's 90 degree connectors you know just has the vertical and then the cross pipes and i guess that's just a solid piece a 10 foot stick mm -hmm. and uh and then 20 foot long i don't know how it's connected in the middle maybe there's a coupling in here somewhere i know there's a four-way connector so about 10 feet down in the middle there's another four-way connector, which is similar to the 90, except it allows you to basically keep going with your run. And so those are in the middle. It also adds the cross brace across uh, here. You can see uh, this is a great diagram of how he made everything. And then uh, he's got a sunshade attached to the top. Looks like linked one uh, from Amazon, 10 by 20, 70% sunshade. And then he's using the ball bungees, which are a really great method for materials with grommets. You can basically just pull it tight, attach it to the frame, and then those ball bungees are really handy to just kind of pull it tight and secure it. Um, yeah, it's a really great build. And uh, I said it's holding up so far in 25 mile, 25 mile an hour plus winds. Oh, good. Because I, I was concerned. Yeah. To be I, honest, I mean, like a full 10 foot length and using all those lengths, I was a little bit concerned about the stability of it just from what I've experienced. Yeah, for sure. I Maybe mean, it takes the sunshade down. You know, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. you got to watch out for that. Especially, yeah, for sure. I mean, because you've got the rebar and the verticals that helps the vertical supports, but, you know, usually we recommend maybe like five foot before you add or to add another brace. So, right. 
Oh. Which would kind of kill the mm-hmm. the vibe. And there's some spots he could do it, but I think that's like that's one of the good things is you know you could make a build, you could make the overall structure, and then add reinforcement as you need. And that's kind of that's a lot of times how I build. You know, I'll get the outside and then figure out where it needs more strength and just add some bracing. Um, you know, granted, I've got a lot of connectors at my disposal, right? If you're trying to plan it out. <laughs> Excuse me. You're trying to figure that out, but you know, it could be an approach for you if you're not crunched on time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's a good thing because, like you know, you can add some 45 degree bracing in the corners if you needed it. But you know, as you said, it's holding up in 25 mile an hour winds, so maybe it doesn't need maybe extra braces. Yeah. And another thing to throw out there, um, just you know, FYI, if you do buy extra connectors at the end of your project, you end up don't needing them, like some bracing. Go ahead, you can send them back, and we'll give you a refund if they're unused. So just throw that out there if that helps, you know, uh, if you end up not using all your connectors. Yeah, for sure. That might be worth putting on, like, the order page or something, that, or, you know, somewhere, just for people to know. I think so, because, like, we almost never uh, have a problem with taking new connectors back, right? Mm-hmm. Relatively unused connectors. Uh, it's always something that we'll do so we really might you know tell people that up front a little bit more might be helpful for folks so that's a great build from uh from jamie really appreciate posting that in the maker pipe facebook group looks like a great build and beautiful space and hope it continues to work out well for you let's uh, look at the next build which is an overhead dust collection arm and this was shared a little while back this is a channel southern style diy definitely check him out and he's making a dust collection arm for his shop and which is a you know a pretty common thing we have all kinds of sawdust uh as you're you know cutting wooden things and uh, yeah as you can see <laughs> it gets kind of a mess especially if you throw it around um but you know he's he's in kind of a, a small space here a small workshop so he wanted to kind of utilize space in uh, a different way and make a, a collection arm that he could attach a hose to and kind of move it around and swivel it around and he went through a couple of iterations using some of the DIY flange methods um, we went through a couple of iterations. He first wanted to build one that would swivel here and in the middle. And um, he, he took the bands off the connector so it could swivel, which is a, a good technique. Um, but ran into some issues with, uh, you know, like half the connector being secured and the other half on the adjustable angle connector because you're trying to achieve the hinge. So some of the pipes uh, that needed to be secure were loose and vice versa. So kind of had to redesign it a little bit, but he goes kind of deep into how he built it the first prototype and kind of different things he was trying. And then ultimately changed the design a little bit. And then I think he also drilled through the connectors, as you could see, to add some self-tapping screws to the connectors where those, where he needed the, the extra security on those. And then I think he ended up just changing it completely. And you can see here, um, here it is when it's finished. So he just turned it into one big triangle instead of two triangles. And then those two pipes can can hinge on that vertical there. And then it created uh, a dust collection arm that kind of folds up into the wall. And then he could grab onto it, swivel it out. Nice. He's got the hose attached to it. And there you go. Huh. Dust collection arm. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And even they included free plants. So if you have a a shop and you want to add a dust collection arm that's similar, you know, I would imagine you can just customize those pipe links kind of to your space. Uh, So definitely check out YouTube channel, Southern Style DIY. And I think it's the same on TikTok and Instagram as well. And you can see he's got the the build plans and everything. So definitely check that out if you're interested in doing something similar. Thanks so much for posting that. Next up, we've got a build from Darren. And this is a review on the T-Connector. Thanks so much for for leaving the review. Glad you had a good experience. Kind of goes into some different things and Darren built all kinds of different things, but this is one of the projects that he shared. And this is a a light grid stand made with conduit. Uh, And I think he said he was using C stands, which can be kind of expensive. And and they're, you know, it's worth it for the lights. You you know, you know, we have a strong solution for the lights, but I think he was using C stands for for different things um, besides the lights, just because he didn't want to spend a bunch of money on all these different stands. So um, he was using the C stands, but now he said the C stands are clear because he's built these with Maker Pipe. I was thinking LEDs went on this, but it's just right. to diffuse the light a li- or to cut the light a little bit, direct the light. I think so. I'm pretty sure. I was trying to look into it a little bit because you know we have lights in here, but they're really small. And I think for large studio applications, 
this is something that you use even like even outdoors, like with the sun, just to, you know, have more direction, a directional light on a subject. Right. And okay. That's that grid material. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And it directs the light. Right. And you got that big window there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's helping with the sunlight anyway. Okay. Now I, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure either. And I could still be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it's used for. Um, but you can see it's got the, the frame for the, the grid. I don't, I don't know if you, you buy that or if you made that too. Um, but it's just uh, the frame holding the grid. And then he's using some, looks like some of the, I forget what those are called. Um, oh, yeah. The the like C-stand arm right. connectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you can adjust it. And then they have like a slot for, you know, different sizes of oh, neat. rods. But he's got that attached to the end of the conduit so he can secure the, the light grid panel to that. Yeah, what are those called? I'm not sure. Uh, if you want to look it up, I'll yeah. keep going. Um, but then you can see he's got uh, telescoping connectors here on the sides uh, using half-inch EMT and three-quarter inch EMT. And um, so he can raise this up and down. It goes down. He's got the 90-degree connectors here in the middle. And this is a good technique to keep in mind when using 90s. You know, the first two builds we looked at, the trellis and the, the pergola, both had 90s kind of, you know, kind of oriented vertically. So it had a pipe in the middle and then a pipe coming out of the ends at 90s. But a good thing to keep in mind for projects is you can actually do this, kind of flip it over, and that's what he's done here. So instead of it having a vertical going straight through, it's the horizontal pipe going straight through here. And then he's got the 90-degree uh, pipes coming out the sides and connecting everything. And then he's using uh, casters and so kind of roll it around, which is really helpful in a studio situation and uh, just a really great build. Okay, I got it. You got it? Yeah, uh, grip head. Grip head. Okay. Yeah. Can you can you pull it up on the internet? Yeah. Exactly. You got it. Nice. I wonder if we can see the bottom. Okay. So that's the bottom for the act that goes normally on the top of the C stand. Right. And so I imagine. Oops. Sneak peek there. That build. Ah. <laughs> uh, the half inch EMT must fit inside that really well. Right. And it, you can tell. I mean, it looks like it might be the perfect size for half inch. Mm -hmm. Then of course you can you know use the the set screw. Um, knob there to kind of tighten that close that if you need to a little bit more so he's got that at the top which is really cool because you know doing that you could basically use all kinds of different camera gear and that's what he said he's doing he's making stands for light grid panels and i think some lighting uh and some different things like different tables light supports and um so it's really cool to hear that he's able to use it for different things and said it's a great solution for saving money for camera camera right stuff. and I, I think at i mean that uh grip head uh thing mm -hmm. that <laughs> uh i mean that solves a unique problem mm -hmm. when building where right. you have to like control that angle and keep that angle really rigid i mean of course we have the adjustable connector but this is like cast in place there's teeth that lock it yeah those teeth right there that mm -hmm. lock it in um and it really can grip hard oh, right. at, at a specific mm -hmm. angle and lock it in place so i think that solves because look at that i mean that's used to support mm -hmm. quite a bit of weight and it's not going to rotate. So, um, I think that's a neat thing to, to, you know, have in the, in the toolbox. Yeah, for sure. And I think in this, on this situation, and it's like threaded onto the C stand maybe. Mm. Um, so, you know, even utilizing the threaded pipe inserts, I'm like sure a there's a bunch volt. of them. Yeah. yeah. If, if somebody finds one, I mean, that that really works well with conduit you know because i don't think that's probably the best option uh yeah look at that that's great um, something like that and that's even now that those are probably skinnier mm -hmm. but if you had that and it was for you know close to the diameter of conduit eight bucks that'd yeah. be great yeah that's really cool so if anybody finds something like that you know link it down below give us a holler we'd love to see uh, if you've experienced that and it fits and it works. Yeah, definitely. We, we kind of geek out over camera stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely, you know, share your findings with us if you find another solution or more solutions, I guess. So that's really cool. Thanks so much, uh, Darren, for posting that. Really glad to hear you had a good experience and that's working well for you. Thanks so much for posting. Next up, we've got a, a video from and project from our friend at MKE Gadgets. Done uh, quite a few videos, done some hack roundups and some different solution, uh, different solutions that he's made with Conduit and some just really creative things overall. Uh, we've, we talked about him, I think, maybe not last week, a couple weeks ago, he's made 
project feet with uh, hockey pucks, and he's just really creative. He likes to turn in, uh, turn some, you know, uh, street finds, people throwing stuff out, and turns it into to cool builds. Uh, but this week he shared a video, and this is a e-bike charging stand that he made, um, as you can see here. And he's using maker pipe and conduit for kind of the base structure. Uh, this is kind of a prototype he made. It's really simple. It's two, four, six connectors total. Um, and, you know, just a few pieces of conduit. And he really did something cool we'll look at in a second for uh, something we've talked about a lot that I'm excited for. But <laughs> you can see this stand that he made. And he's using some of his 3D printed uh, pipe feed that he's made in the past. He's got a lot of great 3D models and accessories he's done. Um, but... He basically added a piece of plywood to that, and then he built some different things here. So he's got a spool kind of built in on this side for an extension cord. That extension cord runs directly into this electrical box. He's got it set up where two e-bikes can charge at once. The chargers are kind of nestled here on these this kind of base that he built for them, and then they plug into the electrical outlet. And what's really cool is this this back leg swivels, so it's like quick depo deployable, and um, oh, kind of like an, an easel. Sort of thing, right? With the chain, mm -hmm. and we've talked about doing something like this in the past, and like making um, in saw saw horses. Oh yeah, and then being able to swivel the legs, but not have them go too far. Mm -hmm. So what he's done is he's used the conduit hanger straps, and then put chain between the bolt and the nut on the conduit hanger strap, so it's secured to the conduit. But this chain, uh, oh, that's super smart. Yeah, so this chain, you know, moves, and you can swivel it, and the chain, of course. You know, loosens as you can see there, or tightens whenever you move the back leg, and so you can kind of flat pack it. I like it. It's a really cool project. Uh, definitely check out MKE Gadgets channel. Show him some love. He does all kinds of cool things with uh, with conduit and not just conduit and maker pipe. He's yeah. done all kinds of amazing things. So awesome channel. Check it out. Yeah, for sure. Next up is a cool project from Thomas, and this is a, a set design for their church. And we saw something like this a long time ago. Uh, but this is something uh, new. They recently just finished, or they're not finished with it yet, I don't think, so it's still a work in progress. But you can see they're building a massive stage like kind of set design using conduit and maker pipe. Uh, and it's really cool. There's a ton of connectors in there. It looks like that's a model, I think. Does that look like a model to you? It looks like a rendering. Yeah, it looks like a rendering. Um, it's so hard to tell these days. I mean, renderings I look so good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even like just... Your average Joe on YouTube is using After Effects and stuff to yeah. <laughs> like trick people out. But so it's still a work in progress, but you can see there's a lot of connectors. And it's basically just made made to be, you know, kind of like an art piece. It's kind of a set design, but it looks like they've got some oh yeah, this is definitely a rendering because they've got I can see that I thought that was a real person at first, but <laughs> you can tell it's a rendering. Um, but you can see they've got the uh, the lights attached on the vertical or the kind of slanted bars and some lanterns and things. So it looks like it's gonna be a really cool project. Thanks so much for posting that. Next up, we've got a project from uh, Serendipity Sue, another longtime Maker Pipe friend. Recently, he's been doing a project with solar, and this is a solar hot tub. So he DIY'd this hot tub, as you can see here, using a stock tank. Um, it's kind of a, I think he said it's 150 gallons. And what he's doing is really clever. Um, so basically, he's got the, the, um, the stock tank, and then he's got this 200-foot black hose and that water is running through. And basically he did a series of tests to kind of see, he got a $20 Amazon uh, hot water pump, as you can see here. And that basically, I think he's using pool water, which is really cool to kind of utilize that pool water. <laughs> nice. Filters through, got 200 foot black hose. And basically he built a framework to, to kind of store the hose, uh, as you can see here, put some like acrylic over top of it. Um, and then he built the stand with maker pipe and conduit to wow. hold that up and angle it at the sun just to kind of take advantage of the sun and wherever it's at during the day and using that to heat up the water for this hot tub, this DIY oh, hot tub. Wow. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah, for sure. It's super cool. And then he's got some uh, like insulation here he cut out to kind of match the top just to kind of make a little cover to keep it. Mm -hmm. And he said his goal was to get it up to... 103 degrees, and uh, he said since it's inside their greenhouse, the greenhouse was 120 inside. So between that and the pump and everything, he said that the the it's working well. He said he I think he started at 68 degrees and got it up like up to 90, uh, just by using the solar panel or the solar shower, um, or like you know the 
the stand with the, the hose and everything. Right. And uh, and yeah, turned it into a, a solar powered hot tub. Wow, that's so cool. Uh, so thanks so much, Serendipity Sue, for sharing that. Really great to see. And if you want to make a DIY solar hot tub, definitely check out that video. Next up is a build from Lance, and this is a blazer bikini top. So he said nobody makes a top like this for blazers. There isn't an off-the-shelf solution. There's a beautiful blazer. It's a really nice truck. Um, yeah, that is cool. Yeah, really nice truck. Um, and I think he said his daughter sits in this back seat here, and without the top, you kind of you're just you know subject to the sun, uh, and they've got some nice shade up front, um, but back in the back there isn't anything. So he made this uh, this bikini top and this frame for it with maker pipe and conduit. Nice. And there's some cool things incorporated into it here. Um, he's using the end clamps, which I thought was really cool. Um, and we've talked about that. So we have the, the adjustable angle connector. You've got the puzzle piece that attaches here, and you've got the end clamp. And they're kind of two separate connections, so you can hinge it. But you can kind of take the puzzle piece clamp off and use that for different things, like mounting surfaces. And then the end clamp, uh, people have been using it for situations like this, where you need basically a mounting point on the end of conduit. So he's basically done that here. I don't know if this is this is maybe a commercial solution, not a commercial, but just... it looks like some sort of extruded aluminum rail mm -hmm. of of some sort. Yeah, and I don't know if he custom made those. looks it Looks maybe like it because there's some specific ones here for the top and everything. That's the best picture we got. Uh, yeah, there's not really a close up of everything. That's the closest one we have. Um, but you could imagine where that's like some angle iron, some aluminum mm -hmm. angle, right? That yeah. you can get pretty much anywhere. You know, that might work too. And I imagine there's probably some like holes in the bed already in the bed rails, kind of like we looked at with builds last week. Right. Um, so that you can just kind of utilize to mount the the, um, the bar to that you make. And then from there, you know, he kind of drilled holes in that. And then that's where he used the bolts through that uh, bracket into the end clamp to, you know, add attachment points on the ends of the frame. And then going up, he's got some nice bins here. There's a coupling in the middle to kind of connect the two halves. And, uh, yeah, this looks really great. I can't tell if there's a pipe going up to the top there. I don't think you need it. Just tension it over. Yeah, because then he's got the top secured. And I imagine that I'm not too familiar with these older blazers or not, but I think they have kind of like Jeep kind of style where you can take the, the roof off or the fabric off. Well, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. As always, it's been a ton of fun. All the builds will be linked down below. And uh hope everybody has a good week. Thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with us. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week.